the cheapest control system in the world. My name is Patrick Murray. I recently wrote a post called The Cheapest Control System in the World, showing you or explaining how you could create a control system for less than $50 using a Raspberry Pi. And in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that. So right here is a screen of my Raspberry Pi. I've got VNC installed, which means I don't need a keyboard and mouse and monitor connected to the Pi. I'll just use my laptop and connect to it over VNC. Now, I have to be honest, it took almost two hours to get the Pi set up and ready to go without the programming. So right now it's in a state where we're ready to start programming it. And that is, of course, less than ideal. And I won't explain all the details in the video, but I will list all the steps in the blog below the video that'll show you how to get set up um, for control with a Raspberry Pi. And if anybody's interested, of course, we could set up the Pi for you and just set it, uh, send it to you in the mail if you don't want to spend that time doing it. But here's uh, the screenshot of the Pi itself. And I just wanted to show you once you have everything installed and set up here under programming, there's something called Node-RED that's pre-installed. And there's a few things you need to do to that as well to get it ready for control. But once you do and you got VNC installed, then it's really just a power supply and a network connection. And then you could program it from a web browser. So here's a web browser back on my laptop and I've browsed to that um, IP address of the Pi with uh, port 1880 and now I'm in the node red flow editor. And in here uh, I could set up a dashboard. So I'll show you how to set up a dashboard real quick. We could drag in a button, a drop down menu, a switch, slider, whatever we want. And these are all just, these are nodes. That's why it's called node red. And I'll assign these nodes to a certain group, and then I'll show you what the UI looks like and how easy it is to get a very simple dashboard set up with Node Red. So basically, I'm just assigning each of these elements to a group, and then I'll click Deploy, and now this is running. And we'll copy this link, open a new tab, and it's the same IP address except slash UI. So we'll browse to that, and there is our UI that we set up. There's the button, here's the drop-down list. Of course, we didn't put anything in there, so it's empty for now, and there's a switch and a slider. And of course, we could adjust all the colorings of this. We could add more of these boxes. We could even add different tabs, and a nice slide-out menu will show up here on the side. We could rename everything. Now, of course, it's not that flexible. It's not a completely custom user interface, but it, uh, it is flexible enough where you can do a lot of interesting things with it, and it's really easy. So you've got a web, uh, a web user interface, and you don't have to be a web developer. You just drag these things in here, and you're ready to go. Pretty cool, huh? So what about sending commands? What about actually communicating with something? So let's modify this button here. We'll uh, give it an icon. And I happen to know the icon for power. And the label will just say power on. And, um, and what we'll do is when it's clicked, we'll send a Boolean true. So that'll just basically create a pulse whenever somebody clicks that button or presses that button. And then we'll take a function node and we'll create the command. So when it, we'll just wire this guy up. So now whenever this is pressed, this function node knows that it was pressed. And right in here, I could write JavaScript. And there's no need to be afraid if, if you don't know JavaScript, it's actually very simple and the things you're doing with it here are really, really easy. So Node-RED works with a, a message concept and uh, in a message are a few things like a timestamp and a payload. And that's what we wanna change here. So right here, we'll just say message.payload is equal to, and then we'll put in the command that we wanna send. So we'll say power on, for example, and maybe a, a carriage return. So maybe that's the command to turn on a display or a video projector or something like that. So we'll set message.payload equal to that. And then here, return message. So that means that this will come out the output of this function node. And we'll wanna send it to a device. So let's assume that our device is on the local network and it has an API that works over TCP. So we'll just wire these guys up. And now 
this message.payload that we made will come out here and go into that TCP socket and off to the device. All we need to do is enter an IP address. Um, I'll be using my laptop as a, as a test here and put in the port and that's it. And here on the return, uh, this says when this connection should be dropped and we'll mostly want to keep it open so that we could receive responses from the projector whenever something there changes. So we'll just say never and keep the connection open. We'll click done and we'll put in a, a debug node here. So let's grab a debug node so that we could see if we get anything back from that TCP socket. And that's about it. So now whenever that power button is pressed, I'll send the power on command to this TCP socket. And whenever that TCP socket receives a message, it'll print out over here to this debug menu. So I'll erase that for now. And we'll click deploy and that's it. Now it's up and running. So I've got a, uh, I've got a terminal window open here and I'll just open up a, a, a TCP server socket on 8081. And then we'll go over here to our user interface, click the power button, and you see right there that we get that power on command. So remember, this is being served up from a Raspberry Pi. This is a user interface, so I could browse to this with any web browser, with my phone, with a laptop, whatever. Um, of course, I gotta be on the local network because it's a local IP. And uh, I click that button and the messages get sent off over to uh, to whatever TCP connection I put in. And of course we could receive messages back and that should get printed here to our debug window. Pretty cool, right? And there's of course more possibilities, whatever you want. So I could copy and paste this function node and let's say that in that drop down menu, I've got a few options. So here I'll say, I don't know, I'll make a value of one and set that to the laptop and maybe I've got a few other sources to select and I'll give each one a value and, and then we'll parse out that value and create a command with it. So here, I've got three sources in here. I'll say done and we'll wire this up here. And then in this function node, again, all we'll do is say if uh, message.payload is equal to one, then we'll create the command to select input one. And we'll use the same thing from before. Message.payload, and then we'll just say uh, source one, or whatever the protocol is for the device that we're controlling. And then for our other two, we had three sources in there. So we'll just make else if statements. You could do a switch case. That would probably be a little nicer, but I think this is easier to understand. So else if it's two, then we'll select source two. And if it's three, then we'll select three. And then we'll return that message and we'll click done there. And then we'll just connect those two up and then whatever it is. So when it's one, then source one will get sent out here, two or three and on and on. So we could deploy that nice and quick. It's ready to go. So I've got my option here and I could select those. Let me make this a little smaller and we'll see if our, uh, if our TCP server, because I redeployed, I'll need to start that server up again to make sure it's listening for the connection. So it won't connect until I select a source and actually send the message and there we go. So um, that's it, source two source three. So that's how you could very quickly um, create a web user interface and control AV devices. Now you won't be using this in all of your AV projects, obviously, but I really think this is something every, every AV programmer should have in their back pocket just to, uh, to control those rooms. Did you ever see a room with just a video projector and uh, then the remote control gets lost? Something like this, less than 50 bucks, a Raspberry Pi. You have a web interface that you could browse to all the time. It's always there waiting for you. And of course you could go even further. You could create a custom web UI with um, some of the tools that are out there on the internet. And you could create a REST API really easily. Um, I'll show you how to do that here. Right here, you just say HTTP. You pull in one of those nodes and here you could create your own REST API. And you put in slash select source and then the body of that would show up as message.payload. And then you would just use this IP address 
and uh, post to select source and make the body a one, two, three. And then you could parse that out into your function node and you're selecting the source. So just like that, you don't have to be a web developer and you could create a REST API nice and quick, or you could write a, a mobile app with Android or Swift or something like that. The possibilities are really endless. So what do you think? Please leave some comments and let me know if you love it, hate it, if you'll ever use something like that. I'm really curious to see what the rest of the AV community thinks of nice, simple solutions like this. And um, the Raspberry Pi is a nice little box. It's not only cheap, it will run for quite a while, especially in a, a configuration like this. As long as you get a decent power supply and you're not writing to the SD card, which we're not, all we're doing is the SD card is really only used to boot up the Raspberry Pi, and that's really the biggest danger is that that thing will um, will just stop working. But we're not writing to it, so the lifespan should be nice and long, and um, these things will just go and go and go. So let me know what you think.